What's up everyone, KG here. Today I'm going to show you how to build the glass bridge from Squid Game. Alright, so to start off, for those who aren't familiar with Squid Games or the glass bridge, it was a show on Netflix where a bunch of people were competing to win a bunch of money, but the competition would all end in death, so whoever the last one alive was got to win all the money. And in the competition, one of the tasks was a glass bridge, and each pane of glass side by side one was the correct one and one was the incorrect one so you had to cross the bridge jumping from pain to pain hoping that you were going to pick the right one so i recreated that same thing so one of these panes of glass is correct and it'll hold your weight and the other one will just break out from under you and you'll fall to your death um, i made it so that if you try and break it it'll just respawn so there's no cheating. So if you choose one and you know it's that one's right, then you know that one's wrong. So if I jump over onto that one, it'll break on me and I'll fall. And then I did that for everything here. So it goes over this way, you fall. And yeah, so, and then, like I said, there's no cheating. There's no, if you're in a competition with someone else, you can't just go back and take out both of them. Um, I know this most likely if you guys are going to build this it's going to be built in a uh, protected area anyways but I just wanted the challenge of being able to do it in a non-protected area where someone couldn't just come up and uh, break it on and kind of screw people over. So I'll show you how to build it both ways one where it's it's got this built into it where it'll just respawn the block and another one if you know you're going to be building it in a, in a protected area where uh, you can have people play it but they can't break any of the blocks um, I'll show you the easy way on how to do that as well but um, I have it so that if you look at it it's obviously used so I built a reset button so if you just click the reset button it just fills everything back in and then over here we've got all of these levers so right now so this actually can uh, you can adjust the correct and incorrect block so right now that's the correct one that's the incorrect one and I have here we start on this side so if the lever is down the right one's safe if the lever is up the left one's safe so if we just flip that now if I go over here I should be able to jump on this one and it's safe jump on this one it breaks so like I said, it's you can keep playing the game and you can adjust it however you want. I wouldn't advise having the levers right behind it. I'd have it in some sort of hidden area, obviously. But I built it too so that these can pretty much be placed anywhere. It's just you have to put its location in one of the code blocks. And the way that all of this works is right behind this wall and it's all these command blocks. The great thing about this is that none of these command blocks have to be here. So they can be anywhere you want to put them because they're not actually physically linked to the switches at all. And um, actually it's this first block. If we look in there, it's actually only executing the code if the block at this location is a lever empowered on so that's what this one's saying so that location in that command block is this location right here so it's saying if the lever there is in the down position or is true or on or however you want to say it then it'll run this set of codes along the top here and if it's in the off position then it's got this one here so execute if the block in that location same location is a lever and it's powered off then run this set of code and these are pretty much the exact same thing but a couple little tweaks um, to determine which block breaks and which one stays so that's this one is for the lever and then we go to the next block or we'll look in here so it's repeat unconditional always active this one is part of the chain, so it's a chain of the purple one. It's unconditional, always active. 
Hello, this is KG in the future editing this video and I noticed that mid video I was doing a little bit of tweaking with the command blocks and I forgot to set this one back to conditional. So make sure that the second block over or the first chain block is set to conditional. Everything else is good, but those I just forgot to set back to conditional. Sorry. And this one is determining if the block breaks if you jump on it. So it's executing the code if an entity or the closest player, the entity of the closest player is at this location, which is pretty much one above and right in the center of one of the glass blocks. And this is the left glass block. And then it has a radius, a, a hitbox pretty much that if you jump into, it'll trigger this event. And this event runs this code over here, which is set block here. So this is the, the actual glass block location. So the, the one right below where you're jumping onto and it sets it to error and destroys whatever block is there. So it destroys the glass block, turns it to error, and then you just fall to your death. And this one, like I said, chain, unconditional, always active. And that one goes into this chain block, which is conditional of the back block. And all this one does is sets the block at this location at negative 12, negative 58, negative 3 to air and replaces whatever is there. In this location right there is this one. And it's this redstone block. And it turns that to air, which then depowers this one right here because it needs redstone unconditional repeat and what this one does is it executes if the block at this location which is the block is the glass block on the left um, if it's air it runs this set of code which is the set block at the same location so 1, negative 58, negative 7, 1, negative 58, negative 7. So if this location is air, it then sets it to glass and replaces whatever's there. So when it runs this, this block gets rid of this, turning this off so that it doesn't reset this block. Again, if you jump on it, otherwise it'll just keep, it'll just keep doing that. And that broke because I got rid of that. Let's go like that. There we go. So if we go over there and that's powered, it stays on. And all that does is once you fall on it, let's go over here. It gets rid of that. So it makes it so that you can fall through it. And that's pretty much it. So that that's the coding for when it's in the on position. And then, like I said, when it's flipped in the off position it just does the exact opposite so in this one it says if you jump right above this location so one negative 58 negative seven then it turns into air this one because it's in the off position instead of negative seven it's negative five and same thing over here one and then it's negative 4.5 which is the one right above it um, at negative 57. So execute if the player goes right above that block, turns it the air and destroys whatever's there, which is the glass block, and then you fall to your death. And uh, let's see here. And all this does is it just sets this location to air, which is this one, which is the reset and the repeat function. So it stops it from being able to do that. And that's pretty much how those work. And uh, if, like I said, if you don't wanna have that extra functionality and you know that you're gonna have it in a safe location where people can't break things anyways, and this is just kind of redundant, then all you gotta do is you'll keep this set right here this repeat and uh, all all that's going to do is help you it's going to just keep it so that you can have that reset button that's the only functionality it's going to have is for the 
reset button. Everything else only needs these two blocks right here. And the purple one is the execute the lever. So this is just calling to that lever location and telling you and telling this block if it's if it's reading true or false or up or down or however you want to look at it. And if it's true, then it runs this set of code, which is pretty much just the execute. If the person is over, is one above that glass block, then break it. And it just activates this block and allows it to break. And then you'd have the one for the other side as well. So it would just be these two blocks, and then there'll be another set of blocks on top. And you'd set this to chain. And then you would just change this code. You would just change that to, tr to false in this one. And then this one you would just change negative 6.5 to negative 3.5. Or no, negative 4.5, sorry. And negative 7 to 5. And then that's it. And that would be all your code you'd need for... The first two blocks here and then you just rinse and repeat all the way down the line kind of like what i did here so this was for the first two blocks second two third fourth fifth six seven so we got one two three four five six seven blocks there or seven rows and uh yeah and that's pretty much it and the way that the reset button works is same thing you can have this anywhere because it calls the location of that that button so at that location where the stone button is if the stone button is powered on then it runs this code along here which pretty much just sets fill this this location so from here to here and just fill it with redstone blocks and replace whatever is there and this from this location to this location is this set of redstone blocks right there and then you probably guessed it but this one is the exact same thing but instead of being negative 58 it's negative 60 negative 60 set it with redstone blocks and it's this one right here obviously you can't put in these exact coordinates because you're probably not going to be having these in the exact coordinates so you're going to have to change this to wherever you're going to be building this so the coordinates are only for my build but um but you would just change them to wherever you would want like say that wherever you would need the redstone blocks and then all these you would just change these coordinates to wherever you have the levers. And uh, and yeah, and that's just like that. And because I got rid of all of those redstone blocks, nothing is going to refresh if it turns the air. So if I go over here, these should all break if I hit them. And then you just go over here, click that button, resets it because it then put those back in there but the thing is is that uh, if you have these over here what you're going to want to do is uh, so if if you're going off of just this basic design you're not going to want to keep the redstone in place or else it's just going to keep um keep doing this even if you jump on it so the way to fix that is you would have to go in here and add two more blocks of uh of coding and all you're gonna do is make it so that they disappear so you take this coding and you just copy this and then instead of Copy this and go over here and paste that. And instead of redstone block here, you're going to change that to air. And then do the same thing with this one, which is the negative 60 one. So copy all of this. And then go into that last block and change 
redstone block to error. And then, then at that point, it will create a redstone block and then delete it. So now if you go over here and we'll break all of these, if you hit the reset button, it brings them back. So it brought the redstone block for a second and then took it away. Just gave it enough time to reset everything and then everything breaks again. Like I said, this you'd only do this if you're doing it this way, the simple way. If you're doing it this regular way, then you don't need to delete the redstone blocks because they're actually kind of key to how the whole thing works. Otherwise, I think that's pretty much it. So guys, if you have any questions or if anything was really confusing about anything that I've said, please let me know in the comments and I'll try and go over it as best as possible. Like I said, all of the code will be in the description section below and I'll add a link so that you can actually download this map on PC and uh, you can actually play with it and uh, copy and paste it if you really want to. I don't really care. Use the exact same design. Otherwise, I think that's pretty much it. So guys, I spent a lot of time on this. So if you guys like this video, let me know by hitting that like button. If you want to see more like this, please hit that subscribe button. Again, this is KG and I'll see you guys next time.